You guys are loved and appreciated. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Welcome to Real Life Transformation Center. Real life, real love, real, real lessons. lessons. Where the, Where things, the things of God, God are made, made real. This is what we're doing, making sure that God's word becomes real. Hey, Terry. Yes, how are you okay, doing, Terry? Good. You guys can hear us okay? Awesome, awesome. All right. So I looked at the, the um, Army College Funds, $25,000. I can go to college, and that's what I did. It was not easy. It was hard for me to leave my family, to go yes. to a place where I had no idea where I was going to, and to a lot of, I mean, total different cultures, everything. But I did what was hard then. And now I'm not saying that things are like a piece of cake. But because but I prepped, I did the prep work, now it's easier. It could be much more difficult if yeah. you didn't do what you, uh, you know, if you didn't face the challenges. And yeah. You know, I always tell Charlene, you know, she did what was hard so life was easy. I did what was easy so life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can you guys relate to that? You know, uh, you know, hey. uh, the thing is, you know, we have a good life, but, you know, it's the grace of God, you know, because I didn't always face the challenges. Sometimes I ran from challenges. You know, I took the easy way out, and I'm telling you, that's not the way to go. Yeah. Just whatever it is you have to deal with at the time, go ahead and deal with it. Meet it head on if you have to, but don't take the easy way out if your dream is on the other side. Don't back off for any reason. Yeah, and we've been encouraging. Like, I've heard you um, encourage, like, um, one of our friends, Jessica, because she wanted to go to law school, but then, you know, she was like, man, this is really hard. I'm not able to do this, that, and the other. And Don totally gave her that quote. And it's really powerful because we have to be willing, especially, come on, you guys, you younger people that are like in the 20s and 30s and 40s, you still, it is not too late. You can still figure out what you want to do and actually go ahead and do it. You have time. You have 24 hours in a day mm. to make things happen. Yes. What are you doing with the time that you have? Are you wasting time on TV? Are you wasting mm. time scrolling social media? And what are you doing with your time? Because you have, uh, you have enough hours in a day to become an expert in whatever the gifting, the area of gifting that God has given you. Because, you know, you only, what? We only have 24 hours to a day. Yes. You know, an average person sleep eight hours, work eight hours. You have eight hours left. So we really don't have any time to waste. You That's know? right. And so when you talk about television, that was a big one because I grew up, I loved television. I mean, I was hooked. I was like an addict. I'd run home from school, forget about my homework. I wanted to watch television. You know, right. but as I got older, I started watching less and less television to the point, you know, maybe a football game here and there. I don't watch television at all. Yeah, we And um, instead of watching television, I developed this habit of reading. I love yes. to read. Yes. And uh, television just don't interest me no more. Yep. You know, and when I listen to some of the things that people are watching on television, I'm like, wow, I can see why some of you having challenges in your life. Look at this stuff. You know, what you put in is what you get out. That's My mother right. used to say what you put in the pot is what you get out of the pot. And if you're watching negative stuff, if you're watching things like Empire, what are some of the shows that are out today? You know, uh, <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians and uh -oh. Ballers, Ballers Wives. Let's and see what they're going to put in there. Court. I mean, you know, you, look at the stuff that you're getting on the inside. And uh, But anyway, what I'm saying... To me, it's all a waste of time. I'm not saying you can't watch a movie and have fun, but really, if you knew what you want in life, you have no other time but to work on your dream, to fulfill your dream. That's we were right. talking yesterday about uh, the gift, serving your gift to humanity. That's right. You know, Jesus said, if you want to become great, become the servant of all. And so the question is, what do you serve? You serve your gift to humanity. Yes. And so what I'm saying is we really don't have any time to waste time, but I just had to pick up on that where you left off talking about... Uh, Television. That's good. Victor said in 60s because I said 40s, 50s. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and yeah, 60s. I, think I saw Victor. How you doing, Victor? And yeah. I see who's that Panama girl. All oh, right. that's Jennifer. All right. Hey, Mia. Uh, yeah, but so. uh, I like that because really it's never too late for you to, because no, a lot not. of us, it's because not. we've, uh, we've kind of went for things that maybe ne not necessarily was ours. In other words, we leaned our ladder up against the wrong wall. And we recognize that and now it's time for us to shift and go to our actually reason for being. So you're going to have to shift and do that. But you went the wrong way. You got what I'm saying? But it's never too late for you to get an awakening and say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And spend every heartbeat that you have, every moment that you have going after that, becoming an expert at it. So, and, yes, you're right, right. Vic. And find joy in it. Enjoy yes. what you do. You, what, if God has called you to it, you should enjoy doing it. 
Yes. You know, it shouldn't be a burden to Drudgery. You. Right. You know, yeah. and maybe if, if you're doing something and it's just a lot of work and you don't look forward to doing it, maybe that's not your, has nothing to do with your assignment. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what you shouldn't be doing. But what you need to be, what you should be doing is what, what's your passion? What stirs you up? Yeah. What excites you? And a lot of times that's how we find out what God has called you to, you know, by following the desires yes. of your heart because God give us the uh, desires of our heart. And what, in other words, he's given us what to desire. And so uh, there's another quote I want to read real quickly. Mm -hmm. It says, you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep uh, rereading the last one. Mm. You can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. Wow. You know, in That's other words, we, we have to let some things go. Someone said in order to get something new, you have to leave something old. Yes. And there's some things we have to leave, some situations I mean, uh, 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 old thought life, you know, maybe some people, yes. you know, places we used to go to and hang out. If you want to step into the new, you got to leave something old. We, it's like, you know, uh, you, even a snake shed his own old skin. That's you right. Know? And uh, yeah. so, you know, it's just time that, you know, you have to get rid of the old, step into the new. And sometimes leaving the old could hurt because you have to leave some things. You may have to leave some, leave some relationships that you enjoyed at one time or maybe still enjoy. Yeah. But if it's not taking you in a direction that your heart is pulling you, right. then, you know, maybe you need to uh, rethink uh, some things. Yeah, and that rereading, it says something about rereading your past. Yeah, it what says you that? can't st uh, start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. Yeah, that really reminds me of don't hold on to your history at the expense of your destiny. So don't hold on to mm. what you were stuck in in the past. Everything that was in the past is in the past. So you need to move forward and you can't move forward and backwards at the same time. And so you cannot, a lot of people's futures are eclipsed because they are holding on to old wounds, old hurts, old this, old that, this didn't work, I failed, I didn't do good this time. So you're holding on to all of that and it's really difficult for you to move forward. And when you do that, you actually moving, but you don't really have range because you can't even move forward because this thing, this stronghold is pulling you back. So we definitely will do not want, we want to learn from our history, but we don't want to stay stuck in our history. It says forgetting those things there you go. I was just thinking that are that. behind. I press toward the mark, toward the, what is it? Forgetting, the prize. Forgetting those things which are behind yes. and reaching forth yes. to the things which are before you. We, we're messing it up, but you know what we're, you talking, know what we're about. talking about. And then, uh, you know, but... The thing is, you know, I think it was Mother Teresa talked about, and she was speaking about leadership because mm -hmm. all of us are leaders. God has given us something that he wants us to lead. You are a leader. God never created a follower. Yes. He created leaders. And uh, what we learned in, through our study that you are a leader in an area of gifting. Yes. Now, Mother Teresa said, don't wait for leaders. She said, go alone. Do it alone. Yes. Feed one person at a time. You know, in other words, you don't need everything that you think you may think you need to start. You don't need to wait for people. You don't even need people approval a lot of times. If you have a desire to do something, just step out and start doing it. That's because good. if you're waiting for approval, mm -hmm. you'll probably never do it. You'll probably never get it done. And so, you know, the thing is, don't wait. Start. No, just do it. You know, start. That's what leaders do. They don't wait. They start. Don't be afraid to make a mistake because you are going to make mistakes. The thing is to learn from the mistakes that you make, but move forward anyway. Yeah. And don't be afraid to go, like Don said, alone. I mean, just do it alone. Do it by yourself. When we get ready to push that baby out, we got the, I mean, Don was there. He supported me. He was praying for me. He was helping me relax. But I ultimately had to be the one that pushes that baby out. And that's everyone with their dream. You have to be the one yes. that pushes it out. You have to be the one that sits up with the baby at night when the baby has a fever, <laughs> et cetera, when your business is on the rocks, you got to nurture that thing. So you're the one that is important and you're the one that can only start, start. You start, start. Don't wait for nobody else to come right. behind you, okay? Right. And then here, I have another quote for you. It says, uh, your need for acceptance. Mm. Or it says, your need for acceptance can make you invisible in the world. Uh, it says, in this world, risk being seen in all of your glory. Wow. Is that something you need to be accepted can make you invisible in this world. So what I'm mm -hmm. talking about is we don't depend on people and don't wait on people. You don't need someone's approval. If you believe God is calling you to it, step out and begin to, begin to do it. Begin to move. Because, um, again, 
if you're waiting on acceptance, a lot of times people are not going to accept you just because. Right. They don't agree with what you're doing, or maybe they know what you're doing is right. But you know how people are sometimes because you thought of it and they didn't. You know, uh, you can't you can't wait for people. I'm yes. just saying that you have to move forward. And so th I think this is a wonderful quote. Yeah. It's talking about being accepted. Mm -hmm. You've already been accepted by God. You don't need anyone to accept your plan, your ideas. Yes. You don't need them to accept or approve you. God has already approved you. God has already accepted you. And then God gave us a command. Jesus said to go into all the world. Yes. He told you to go. You don't have to wait for anyone else to tell you to go. He already told you to do it. And so, you know, in that go, we're talking about, I believe it's a Greek word. It's like a thrusting, as if someone pushing you, telling yes. you to move. You know, a lot of us are waiting for things. And, you know, the old cliche, we think we're waiting on God, but God is waiting on us. Yeah. And I think that's true. God is saying, just move. If you begin to move, then I can start putting, you know, steps or, or leading and guiding you in the direction I want you to go. But I just need you to start moving. So don't be afraid. Step out. Yeah. And, and he said, it is finished. So the work has already been finished in you. You just got to step into it and start moving towards your destiny. So it's already finished before you even start it. <laughs> Victor said, and if you don't believe God called you to it, then don't do it. Exactly. <laughs> so if, what, what if someone said, I don't know if he called me to it. Well, well if you start doing it and it's not working, maybe you should stop. <laughs> no, but uh, I like that. Well, if like you don't believe God called you to it, then don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you don't believe, then, I mean, but it starts with belief. You're going to halfway do it. You're not going to do it properly. But that belief, that reminds me of the heartfelt belief. Right. That belief is I'm a doer even if nobody else does it with me. When you have strong belief. So if you don't have that kind of conviction, then you may not need to move out. Just like when Don was talking the other day about those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So that waiting on the Lord, don't yes. move until you get the witness of the Holy Spirit and he tells you to go. But it, but it's him. It's yeah. the witness you get. You're not waiting for people. You're not waiting for people. You know, him. The only yeah. thing people can do is confirm what God has already told you. That's right. Or what God is dealing with you. Confirmation may come from people, but direction comes from God. That's right. You know, and we're to be led by God. Yes. You know, because God, and I know I'm going off, a lot okay. of times people will prophesy. And we know prophecy, you know, God used prophecy. But God never called you to be led by prophecy. That's right. Prophecy, a lot of people have lives have been wrecked ruined because they were led by prophecy yes. that wasn't from God. And so what I'm saying is prophecy should just confirm. So what I'm saying, let people confirm it, but don't let people lead you. Yes, you should only good. be led by God because Holy there's Spirit. different mediums. You know, there's, in other words, there's different voices. And the only voice that we're supposed to listen to is God. So if I say something, you're not really listening to me. I, I have to be in agreement with God. So yeah. I can't say, remember, I remind you, or I can't tell you to do something and then come back later and take credit for it and say, had it not been for me. And you can say, come no, on. all you did was confirm it. Yeah. God had already told me what you was telling me. Or you said it and I didn't recognize it, and God confirmed it later. But the point I'm making is that you're following the voice of God. You're being led by God, not by man. I just want to say hi to Sonny. I see hey, Sonny's Sonny. Uh, my brother Sonny. Hello. Hello. And, um, but anyway, you know, we're talking about you know stepping out into your assignment, not waiting for people. If you have a unction in your heart and God is telling you to go forth, you don't need no one's approval. You don't need no one's acceptance because, again, you're being led by the voice of God, not by the voice of reasoning, not by the voice of my acceptance or my validation. If God has already accepted you, he's already validated you, and he told you to go. So you have an assignment. Yeah. Step out in it. Go. Yeah, and it just reminds me of Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. I set you apart. I ordained you. Yes. I ordained you before mm. you had hands, before you had fingers. I gave you ordination service while you were in your mother's womb. I sanctified you. Y'all got that? He already gave you ordination service inside, and then man confirms what God has already done. So nobody can take that away from you that God has already ordained you. If yes. he called you to be a pastor, whatever it is, he ordained you to do that already. He ordered you. You couldn't have been a stillborn because he ordered you. He ordered your stuff. He ordained you, anointed you, 
put his hand on you, then sent you to the earth realm so that you can be the blessing that you're supposed to be to all of those that he's called you to. Yes, so yes. you have been ordered already by God. So don't wait for somebody like Don said to approve of you when God has already approved of you. Right. You know, and listen, you know, and God, the Bible says the waters issued out of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It didn't stay in the sanctuary. Notice we're not with this, what is called social distancing. Yeah. We're not even in the sanctuary today. But we're the waters that are to issue out. We're to yeah. go out into the dry places. There's a lot of dry places out there in the world. You know, thank God for the church. You know, the church is built off of the apostolic anointing, but the building, don't forget, the building is not the church. Yeah. You're the church. The building is just a place where we come gather. But the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Not in, well, it's in the building when you show up. Yeah. You know, if you show up, you can say, I know the Holy Spirit is here. Why? Because I'm here and he lives on the inside of me. That's but right. what I'm saying is, in the midst of all this, we can still have church. It just may not be in the building. You know, we can have church out there in the world. I think you guys did something uh, yeah, we uh, did. not that long ago. Yeah, we um, at Kaiser, we actually, um, Firefall Ministry, and it was a couple other ministries, they mm -hmm. went and they play, we play Waymaker, and they start doing flag worship and release God's anointing there without even saying the word. God's presence was thick. People were in tears. People were blessed tremendously. So that's where they're go ye right. into all the in, world. Into all the world. I'll tell drive place. Because yeah. these people may never come to church. Exactly. But they had church. They had you church know, you right can, there. You may not be able to preach the word like you preach yes. it in church. But again, we learned... Uh, that there's wordless words. That's right. You know, there's words that you can say without even saying it. Talk yeah. about uh, what about audibleizing it through your actions. You could hear my actions when we were uh, doing vertical leaps. Al Holland was talking about when he took the pen oh, yeah. and he slammed it on the floor. He said, "Did you hear that?" Because he didn't say anything, mm -mm. but physically the way he took the pen and slammed it on the floor, I heard that. I knew his attitude. No, you know, so what he's angry. saying is, yeah. you can. There's wordless words. You can speak without saying nothing. Yes. And so what I'm saying, like, so when Firefall Ministry went to Kaiser and she began to dance, and, yeah, hey, released the anointing. You're going into all the world. Yeah. And so, but all of us have an assignment yes. to go into all the world, meaning the systems of the world. Yes. And so it, the, the church is just one portion of it. Yes. But there's one other, mountain. you know, it's, it's one mountain. Yes. Because we talk about the seven mountains. Yeah. The church is one mountain. But I'm talking about the building where we gather at. But we should go out into the world, not be locked up in a building. Don't, you know, you get locked up in a building and that's all you do. Your gift can only shine in the building. Then maybe you putting your bushel on, or your, your light on their bushel. Your light's supposed to, you're supposed to go forth, go into all the world. Let your light shine in the world, not behind the four walls of the church. Now, if you call the, the fivefold ministry gift, you know, to what the Bible said to some of you have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, I can see why you were shining in that building. But what if you call to the marketplace? What if you call to Wall Street? What if you call to the media, to the news? What if you call to, you know, the medical field? What do you call to the educational field? These different areas. Then you need to get out there and let your light shine. You can't let it lock it up in a building. The water is issued out of That's the sanctuary. Right. It went to the dry places. And where the, where the waters went, it bought healing. So you are the church, but go ye. Well, and that's, that's really, really good, you guys, because every one of you out there have a kingdom gift and a kingdom assignment that God wants you to birth while you're here on this earth realm. So me, for instance, would, um, compel them to come. What's that? Go ye into all, all the world and compel them to come. That word compel, we know that it means to drag, to force, to persuade. But there's another definition definition that I like. That means to persuade by prevalent example. Mm. So when I step into my anointing, my gifting, my talent, my whatever it is, wherever I am, and that light begins to shine in institutional darkness, the anointing is released when I step in to that. And that's how I persuade by prevalent example. And still miracle signs and wonders begin to happen because I'm in my thing. I'm in, I'm, I'm allowing the light to shine out of me. I don't have to let it shine just right there in that one church mountain. I can go into the hospital arena and I can release healing. Because, I can go into because the... Because you are. Yeah. We are the church. Right. Jesus died for us, not for the building. That's right. Not for the microphone, not for the pews. Yes. He died for us. Yes. And so we're the church. And yeah. everywhere you go, you should be able to have some... A, a, a little, well, I don't want to use the word little. You should be able to have a lot of church wherever you go. Yes. And you don't have to quote scripture every time you open your mouth. 
but everything you say should be scriptural. I should be able to go back to the Bible and find some truth in it. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you get people who prophesy a lot of times that it's not even scriptural. You know? know, and sometimes I know I'm going way off. I've had people prophesy to me and they were right until they kept on talking. <laughs> then they, you know, God stopped talking and they kept going. And you can't use that. But my point is, I forgot my point is, but, <laughs> but the point is, you know, everything that you do and say should be scriptural. Yeah. You know, you don't have to, everything you do quoting the scripture, getting so, become a religious, I don't know what's the word, relic. But everything you do should be scriptural. Because some people yeah. don't want to hear that. But when you come and show up with the truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And so my point is this, you can speak truth and it can pierce through anything yes. that someone's dealing with. It can go straight to their heart, you know, the truth and the word of God. You know, when I'm saying something, if it's not true, you and no matter how good it sounds, you can't use it. Right. And so this is why Paul said, if even if an angel came down from heaven preaching another gospel, in other words, he's saying he's not, he don't have the truth. I don't care how good it sounds. A lot of people have gotten off because somebody sounded good. There was a great orator, but it was not scriptural. Right. But anyway, let me stop there. You can't use that, the yes. point I'm trying to make. Amen. So that's it. Uh, okay. Yeah, well. I think that's it. I saw a lot of people join. Karen. I see Karen. And, Ginger. Uh, you guys. Oh, hey, there's Erlinda. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I thought I saw Erlinda. I know. Erlinda's you're loving and you appreciate yes, it. Yes, you are. Thank you guys for joining. So we've been just coming. Just This is going to be called like our Transformational Tuesday because we are real life transformation center. And we believe that uh, you can't move forward until you change. Until you have transformation, you will not move forward. And so, you know, uh, uh, again, uh, the, uh, the scripture that we uh, stand on, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's what we're called to do, to go into the world and bring transformation. But you can't trans bring transformation if you're not transformed yourself. Yes. And so this is what we talk about. And, I guess we've come to an end. Yeah, so thank you guys for joining. Um, we will see you guys Sunday. So join us on Sunday at 7 p.m. We are going to go for it again. So we're going to be consistent every Sunday and every Tuesday, okay? We selected Tuesday as today, so uh, this is when we'll be going live, okay? Yes. All right. And how are you doing, Melinda? Good, Linda. To, hear, good to see you, Hi. guys. All right. Well, let's pray for you guys real quick. Okay. All, All right, right, Father, we give you praise. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you for yes. these mighty men and women of God that you have on the other thank end you. there. We thank, thank you for your hand being upon their lives. Father, we thank you for having an ordination service in their mother's womb. Father, we thank you that you've called them for something so great, so significant. Father, to express that kingdom yes. through them, Lord, we ask that you would give them revelation knowledge of their giftings, their talents, their callings, whatever it is that you have called them to do. Thank Father, you, we ask that you would give them eyes of vision, Father, so that they can see into the future, Father, and operate into their now, right now, Father. We thank you, Father, and we plead the blood of Jesus over every one of them, anybody experiencing any diverse situations, any situations of lack, insufficiency, Father, healing in their body. Father, we call you Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, our healer. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh. And we thank you for being El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Amen. And we thank you for being more than enough in all of our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thanks again. We appreciate your time. And yes. uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. God okay. bless you all. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.